Good day, everybody. My name is Jay Bunker, and I'm speaking to you from my canary barn. I'm a canary breeder and exhibitor with many years of experience. And I should mention that I have a background in nutrition, as I was a trained certified chef, but I'm retired now. I've had many inquiries from uh, canary breeders in my local club, the uh, Northern Alberta Cage Bird Association, about egg food for canaries and what they should be using. So today I'll speak to you about my egg food and uh, canary egg food in general. So when dealing with people with a pet or a single canary, one of the first things I tell people is to keep it simple. One uh, you could say that there are as many recipes for uh, egg food as what there are breeders. I always recommend, recommend if you keep it simple and uh, do what works best for your situation. Too often I hear of canary fanciers, canaries dying because they overfed their birds with well-intentioned kindness. One can see all kinds of suggestions regarding feeding. I once had a lady come to me with questions about her canary, and she always started with her statements with, uh, it says on my iPad my canary should be doing this or that. After a bit I asked her, had she shown her iPad to the canary so the bird would be aware of what it was supposed to be doing? Of course not, she said. As I am in uh, northwestern Canada, we don't have a lot of varieties of ready-made egg foods to choose from. But there are some. You people in the hobby tend to overthink the process and are often somewhat anxious about caring for their canaries. With uh, many people having demanding work schedules, I let them know that there is ready-made egg food available at the pet uh, shop or at the bird shops as well. When I was at the World Show in Zwolle in the Netherlands, I observed what seemed to be nearly 100 varieties of ready-made egg foods. Myself, I prefer to use a pre-manufactured egg food called CD for my base. I should mention that the CD that is available in Canada is different from other parts of the world in that it is devoid of most seeds that our government regulations restrict uh, due to importing concerns. So for people that uh, just have a single bird or just a few adult birds that uh, they can feed this uh, dry product as is to the birds and this should be for a general maintenance uh, dietary supplement. Giving it maybe twice a week uh, is adequate. So for people that just have a single bird or just a few adult birds, they can feed this uh, product dry as is to your birds. This should be for a, a general maintenance dietary supplement. Giving it twice a week is adequate, I feel. Feeding guidelines are on the box as well. Usually at this point I am asked about adding hard-boiled egg. I then hear a plethora of stories about additives and again I recommend to people to just keep it simple. I tell new people with just one or two pairs to not get carried away and in line with keeping it simple to just mix some breadcrumbs and some smashed hard-boiled egg to uh, moisten the breadcrumbs and feed it at a rate of about one teaspoon per pair to start. Any excess can be stored in the fridge or freezer until it's needed again, but never feed your bird products while they are still frozen uh, as it can cause digestion problems. This can be used both in the breeding season and when the birds are molting which is when they need the extra protein in their diet. Okay, now for the next segment of Jay's cooking show here. Uh, we'll take our hard boiled egg and uh, mash it up. This is complete with the shell the egg white, the egg yolk, the whole thing. The uh, shell adds extra calcium to the bird's diet, which is uh, essential for when they're in breeding condition. 
as uh, well it assists them with extra nutrients, especially during the uh, molting time. Then we uh, take our breadcrumbs. I use a whole wheat uh, breadcrumb, as according to our uh, media sources, white bread has uh, very little food value these days, it seems. Even though we were all brought up on it and were raised well. So that's one tablespoon. Not bad. I would like to have it a little bit drier, so I'm going to add another tablespoon. I prefer not to have an overly wet mixture out uh, with your birds, especially on warm days. It'll spoil and make your birds sick. I don't like taking a hard boiled egg and cutting it in half or in quarters and leaving it in the cage until the uh, bird is finished, uh, the canary is finished eating it. Again, you're just uh, courting trouble when you do that. So there you have it. It's a uh, crumbly mix on the dry side. No need for anything else. But if you like, <coughs> You can take some uh, Niger seed and uh, just put a little sprinkle of that in there. Niger seed is like a candy to canaries. Who doesn't like a little bit of chocolate, eh? Give that a little stir in. The Niger seed will help to entice them for, uh, to come and eat the egg food and once they realize what it is that you've uh, created for them, they'll uh, dig into it and eat it wholeheartedly. It's that simple. I feel that it's, it's uh, healthier to give your birds this product when it's moistened, and, but just damp, not wet, to uh, ease in the uh, digestion of the food. Some people add uh, too much liquid to their egg food, and can almost turn it into a soup and a, where you can take it and just literally pick it up in your hand and give it a squeeze and the water would run out of it. That's definitely a sign that they're using uh, too much water. It should be moist and crumbly and that's the state it should be in. For myself, during the breeding and molting season, the egg food as a uh, moist mixture, but during the rest of the season I feed it dry with no added items. As I use a man-made product CD as my base, I like to add a number of natural ingredients into my recipe to supplement it. So my recipe consists of uh, the items shown on this uh, board. Recipe. So my recipe consists of uh, the items shown on this uh, board. My initial research has shown that uh, these items have little effect on the overall amount of protein, fats and carbs, but add a uh, nutritional uh, benefit. Uh, there are many other items that people add to their egg food and when asked about it all I can say is do what works for your birds. My recipe is designed with uh, ease of digestion for the young birds while being nutritionally beneficial. Some breeders add uh, peas which are good. Peas are also known to help to ward off coccidiosis which is a concern at all times. I have heard of people adding garlic or garlic oil to keep away mite at the breeding time. My feeling is that if you have a uh, mite problem, you should deal with that first. I once used to make my own garlic oil mixture that I added to my uh, seed mixture to supposedly help to ward off the mites. I ended up still de dealing with the mites and I had a bird room that smelled like a sausage factory. To make the egg food mix, I used a food processor. To keep my wife happy, I left her food processor in the house and went and purchased a food processor for the bird room 
down at the uh, discount store. It was new and uh, I was rather impressed. It'll... Okay, here I am with uh, all my ingredients ready to uh, put this uh, together with my uh, special $15 blender. I have here a uh, measured amount of uh, the broccoli florets about uh, 60 to set between 60 and 70 grams and from there peas which have been uh, defrosted again approximately the same amount that end up in there as well I have my apple here right off from one of my trees out back and I'll take approximately a quarter of an apple in that goes then you know I'll just mention with the apple that some people like to take the peel off or remove the core etc but I feel there's a lot of natural uh, nutrients in there that are uh, beneficial and uh, one has to remember that the uh, bird's digestive system is uh, different from the human digestive system they're not going to get poison from the uh, apple seeds that are in there. Years of uh, doing this uh, tells me that. Okay, from there I take these, I grind them up. So that's that part there. there uh, the mixture is uh, chopped up and it is uh, fairly fine at uh, this point. Then I usually end up adding my uh, egg into it. Now I should mention that I uh, pre-boil my eggs. I then put them uh, through a meat grinder, shell and all, and then I turn around and put them into Ziploc bags, sandwich bags, and I freeze them and I take them out as I need because I end up uh, cooking up anywhere from uh, four to six dozen eggs at a time. And I keep this uh, little bag here holds approximately six eggs. So it's uh, good for, for me for six, six uh, mixings as it were. So I have a little bit in a bowl here. Again, this is approximately 60 grams, which is the equivalent of one hard-boiled egg. So that goes in. As you saw, there was a number of things in the still picture that I showed earlier. One thing I'll mention here is I had on the sheet soaked or sprouted seed, and I get people asking, what's the difference? So one is this seed here that's been soaked for approximately 24 hours in water. Then I take it out and I drain it. I leave it actually because I have the, the equipment here. I just leave it sitting in the strainer after that. I wash it off and I leave it in the strainer over top of the uh, bowl that I had so that it'll drain. And after a couple of days, what happens is the seed actually sprouts and so you can see the sprouts that have developed from there. One should ideally use the uh, soaked slash sprouted seed just when it's first starting to sprout. The uh, theory is that that's when it's at its highest protein level. But I also find that it's beneficial for the uh, youngsters to turn around and get used to eating regular seed. And by having it soaked, it's easier for them to manipulate as well. It's easier for them to digest. So as I mentioned earlier, you know, we have uh, the uh, Niger seed and a uh, longish black seed. This is kind of like the uh, candy to the canaries and uh, they go crazy for it. That's usually the first thing they go digging around trying to find. That's why I like to put it into the blend. Another seed is the chia seed. And again, an easy seed to digest. It's considered to be higher in protein. It's considered a complete food because of its amino 
acid consistent uh, base. I have hauled white millet. I buy this at the uh, Asian grocery store. They refer to it as porridge. You use it at breakfast time for eating. So I should mention these are approximately one uh, tablespoon uh, measures that uh, I'm using here. Then I have the uh, bee pollen, which looks like this. Seems I'm in competition with singing birds as well. Uh, from there I end up adding a couple of uh, things that are brought in from uh, Germany. One is a herb mix, and this is called Herba. You go on the internet to find that sort of thing. For us here in northern Alberta, that's the easiest way. And then there's this one's called plant, and uh, basically it's just uh, dehydrated vegetables. I know some people like to uh, grade carrot and various other things. When I was working, I didn't have time for such things, so it's easier for me just to use the dehydrated mix. Then I have a couple of little whoops. Let's throw in the sprouted seed. From there I have a couple of other pre-manufactured products. Well, this one is from a company called Bax, and this is the uh, container. They actually call it a Vi-Spu-Min, so it's a vitamin-mineral mix. So I end up adding that in there, and then as a uh, added supplement, I end up adding uh, brewer's yeast. Now this, I uh, listened to a lecture put on by a veterinarian and they told us all about the uh, benefits of brewer's yeast on the digestive system, both for the uh, youngsters and the, the older birds. As I mentioned, this comes from a company called Naturel. And looks as such. So once I have those things in the mixer, I turn around and give them a preliminary mix. I'm going to straighten stuff down off the sides a little bit. So then I have my uh, CD egg food. So CD, when you buy it in the store, comes in a box, looks like that. No, I don't get any advertising dollars from them. It's just what I use. So this is what it looks like. And I use approximately two cups of it in my mix that I make each time. Which is something I guess I should say is these amounts that I use are for myself. This feeds approximately 50 cages with babies in it at, at each serving. Again, just wipe down the side a little bit to get it properly mixed together. Okay. From there, I turn around, throw it into my bowl, and from Blockbuster Video, no longer in existence in our part of the country, or in most parts of the world, I think. Just beginning to feel a little bit like a cooking show on TV. So from there, I just take my mix, I just uh, loosen it up, because some of it's compacted, I loosen it up, and it's then ready, ready to serve. So when it comes to serving, it uh, depends on the uh, time of year, the number of birds that you're dealing with at the time. 
This here is referred to as a finger dish. You end up, I end up just scooping a wee bit in there. The nice thing with these is it fits right in between the wires and of the cage, done. So when you get into larger amounts, I ordered these feed dishes from England. I'm sure you can get them from most anywhere. This is another variety. This goes inside the cage and the cage door latches down. The nice thing with this is it keeps the it off the floor of the uh, cage. So when the stuff falls down, it's not collecting underneath the dish. So this is one size. Then if you have four chicks in the nest or how many, this size works out uh, a lot better. And or as an alternative, there's this round dish. And again, this is a variety that the door of the cage comes down and it holds it in place so that it doesn't get tipped over. That's one thing you want to watch with the uh, dishes. You don't use a dish that's easily tipped over. I've uh, done that before and what's happened is the birds are unable to get at the egg food because the dish is inverted over, right over top of the food. And then you come home wondering why are the birds looking so hungry. So there's, that's that part. I should mention that I also keep a few uh, Norwich and Yorkies here. So I add some uh, orange coloring to their food. Well, I used to keep some red canaries and I used to add the red coloring. I usually keep that in a shaker. I put my little bit of uh, egg food in a dish, shake the colored food over top, a little sprinkle over top, and I find that that's adequate. Another method is to add the paraffin red directly to your egg food and that's usually at a rate of about 8 to 10 grams per, ki per kilo. So you would take that dry powder, throw this into a bowl, put the dry powder in, mix it all around and that's how and then you end up going through this process to uh, turn around and get it get the color agent uh, to your birds. Now I know that there's some people that still are of the habit of, for, especially for their red canaries, they put the coloring agent in the water, which is all well and good, but it also means that the birds splash the water around, you'll end up with getting red color on your cages and also on your floor, so be prepared for that. So there you go, that's the basics for making your egg food regular or color. So I hope you found this of some assistance and the information is something that you can actually use. Good luck in your adventures. Bye now.